What do you call a civilian who has been picked up by the security forces of an occupying army? Maybe given a trial in a court run by and for that occupying army. Maybe not. Maybe charged. Maybe not. And then thrown into prison indefinitely without any recourse for appeal. Is that a prisoner? A detainee? A hostage? A captive? What terminology should we use? Especially when it comes to the over 8,000 Palestinians who remain in Israeli prisons while under Israeli occupation. According to Palestinian prisoners' rights groups, there are over 200 Palestinian children being held in Israeli jails and around 75 women, with dozens of them arrested in the last few weeks alone. Now, Israel is holding about 8,300 Palestinians in Israeli jails, including many who don't even know the charges against them. The young man spoke of mistreatment at the hands of Israeli authorities. When a soldier came to fetch me before my release, he said they would hunt me down and bring me back to jail. Welcome to the Occupation Style Guide, where we look at how we talk about the things we talk about and the words we use. Before getting into the nitty gritty about terminology, how to think about it, what works, what doesn't, and why, I want to give a bit of a breakdown about who these 8,000 Palestinians in Israeli prisons are. So since 1967, when Israel occupied the West Bank and Gaza Strip, around 750,000 Palestinians have gone through Israeli prisons. The vast majority of those who've been imprisoned are young men. In fact, the Associated Press recently called Israeli imprisonment a, quote, rite of passage for Palestinian boys because of how common it is. Four in ten Palestinian men will spend time inside an Israeli prison during their lifetimes. Currently, there are over 8,000 Palestinians held across 19 Israeli prisons, including women, children, and journalists. And there are over 2,000 Palestinians held in what's called administrative detention. According to Israeli human rights organization B'Tselem, administrative detention is, quote, incarceration without trial or charge, alleging that a person plans to commit a future offense. It has no time limit, and the evidence on which it is based is not disclosed. In other words, indefinite detention for no apparent reason. Palestinians also don't go through the Israeli court system, but instead military courts. Around 700 Palestinian children are detained and prosecuted by Israel every year. That makes Israel also the only country in the world to try children in military courts. Rights groups like Save the Children, Ademir, Human Rights Watch have accused Israel of physical and psychological abuse and deprivation of food and water inside these prisons. So what do we call Palestinians in Israeli prisons? The term prisoner in and of itself is not a negative term, but we tend to assume anyone who is referred to as a prisoner is guilty of a crime because of our own biases that result from how our criminal justice systems treat incarcerated people. So calling Palestinians incarcerated by Israel prisoners isn't wrong, but it's just not very clear. It doesn't really tell us the status of these Palestinians. Making it political prisoners also doesn't help because that insinuates that those who are held in prisons are held there for their political beliefs and actions, which also isn't always the case. They're also not captives. That's just too vague, and it doesn't tell us much about what they've experienced, even though the violent ways in which many Palestinians are taken in the dead of night, their homes raided by military or police, might make this feel like the right term. And imprisoned Palestinians are not hostages either. A hostage is someone taken in order to demand something from the party they were taken from. The Israelis taken from Israel by Palestinian groups would be hostages because the purpose of capturing them was to exchange their release for the release of all Palestinians from Israeli prisons. So what do we call them? At AJ+, we've chosen to use the word detainees. It's not a perfect word, but it does encompass many parts of the experience of Palestinians under Israeli military occupation and incarceration. There's an understanding around the word detainee. There's a connotation of some semblance of injustice that perhaps there's no charge, that they live in difficult conditions, dangerous conditions. We refer to the 780 men and boys who were, and the 30 who continue to be, held at Guantanamo Bay as detainees because of the nature of their capture. We call them detainees due to the fact that the vast majority were never charged with anything, and even those who were charged with a crime were often charged on faulty or incomplete evidence. And we call them detainees because of the nature of their detention. And so a word like prisoner isn't, again, wrong per se, 
just doesn't capture the intrinsic injustice at the heart of the Palestinian experience of the occupation. Part of talking about the Israeli occupation, like talking about any major story or history, is constantly engaging and re-engaging with the terms we use to describe even the most seemingly minute details. Because there are no minute details in a situation that determines whether a nation will exist or not. And the language we use, even from afar, is used to determine that future as much as any bombs and walls.